Hey guys, Jeremy Jacobitz here from Brunch Boys. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. It's lovely, lovely, lovely seeing you all today. So, here is what we're doing today. We are once again combining our food adventures with our camera adventures. So let's talk about the camera stuff first. Uh, we're doing lots of videos on my Canon R5. This video will be sort of about that today, but it will be specifically about shooting and editing C-Log one on the Canon R5. Uh, I did a video a few weeks back about shooting log for the first time, and I have learned oh so many things about it. Um, since then, I've gone through the ups and downs and the learnings and everything to try and get better at it, and what I want this video to be is a beginner lesson on how you can shoot and edit log on your Canon. Because uh, I think when I was looking for a lot of resources, there were like, a lot of videos here, a lot of articles here, but like not one solid place just to get yourself the most basic level of working with C-Log. And I thought like, well, let me give it to you guys. So to do that, we obviously need footage to play with. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm meeting up with Emily Fedner from Food Lover's Diary, you've seen in other videos. We are going to go to a place called Taste of Northern China, uh, get some food and yeah, get some food, have some fun. And then I will come back here and I'll edit and I'll show you guys how to do that with C-Log. It is not as hard as I thought it would be, but I definitely made a lot of mistakes. I wanna go through those things with you guys as well. So let's go. Oh, and also I'm doing something for the first time. I haven't done in six months or whatever it's been since pandemic time. Uh, I'm taking an Uber. I haven't taken an Uber since then. So first time in an Uber and then we'll eat and come back here and uh, show you guys something. What? what did we learn from today's experience? That Google is not always correct. No, not Google. That if the directions say G to the F, you know I'm not doing that. <laughs> Get that camera out of New York City lesson. Wait, I'm pissed about the taste of Northern China. I oh, hope yeah, that too. forever. It didn't, I don't know, it didn't have any on signs on it. On the website it said it was open. On Google said it was open. Okay, so here are the options. Okay, okay, we're at least close by because we're in that general area. Now, let's see what else. So cool. All right, where did we, where did we end up? Um, after a long and treacherous journey, we are at Deluxe Cream Bow, which is honestly one of like the best restaurants in Chinatown anyway, so I'm excited for it. Um, the thing here, the move, is really to get the hot and spicy wonton, which I think it's interesting that that's the name on the menu because it's essentially like a peanut butter chili oil wonton. And it is what made me love fall in love with that combination of peanut butter and the chili oil. Um, and I recently made a noodle dish inspired by it. So, Jeremy, another thing that's really good, it's like Bao. It's like a risen bun version of a soup dumpling. Cool. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay, so basically what you want to do when you're filming log on Canon, there's a great video up in the uh, description that was done by uh, Lens Pro to Go, actually, where they tested the dynamic range of shooting over and under exposure on this. Um, basically what you want to do is shoot at 400 ISO. That is, the, it's a native ISO for this camera. Shoot there. And what you want to actually try and do is maybe shoot a little bit over. Uh, basically what the test showed is that if you shoot under, it's harder to bring that coloring back to normal without it looking bad, where you could shoot three stops over, adjust in post and bring it down, and you're gonna look really good. And I actually went through that issue when I shot a uh, log a few weeks ago. This is one of the learning things that I had to do, which I shot under, because I was in a really dark kitchen. Normally when I shot with that log, I was able to boost it enough and look good, and the thing just completely fell apart. So shoot a little over, and if you want to make it easier on yourself, I honestly don't do it a lot of this, just because like, I shoot a lot of run and gun, but I do have it on me. Um, get like a middle gray card and expose for here and then see what you can do. Yes, sir. So, okay. Oh, thank That's you. Fine.
and like look how crispy the bottom is. It's so beautiful. Mm. Mm. Is it the best texture? Yeah. Mm. It's like it. So good. So it's like chewy and crispy. Mm -hmm. And like meaty and juicy. So it's like everything. Whoa. I mean, just look inside there. Oh, my God. That sauce is crazy, though. It's so good, right? It's mm. so good. That's mm -hmm. the best dish. My caption for my reel is going to be like, Faye. <laughs> it's going to be, it's, it's gonna be what? <laughs> Not my caption, my, my music. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> uh, what? What did you think? Uh, well, I already knew what I was going to think going in. It is a really delicious Shanghai-style restaurant in Chinatown, and it is uh, unique, I think. Yeah, it was really great. Uh, this is one of our better friends of like what do I call this fucking girl one of my better friends favorite restaurants in your city forever so I've been dying to get there uh I thought we'll start with the bad first I thought the noodles were just okay yeah did you agree they're a little mushy the texture wasn't great um yeah no I I they're not they weren't my favorite and I I can't I cannot remember I, I think there's that Jing Mian they were just called spicy meat noodle on the menu I can't remember like where that dish comes from, and mm. there's a good chance that if it doesn't come, if it's not a Shanghainese dish, then it makes sense, and we should have gotten the Shanghai style main, and that was our mistake. Right, but the bun and the dumplings were fantastic. The sauce and the dumplings were great, and yes. the texture of the buns were unbelievable. The crispy and the chewy and the yeah, ooh, it was so good. Exactly, definitely. I mean, it's very clear why they're famous for the chili oil wonton. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah. By the way, they're called the hot and spicy wonton on the menu, not the peanut butter chili oil wonton, which is what I always call them. <laughs> Great. All right, Success. So support Chinatown. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it is a week later and we are back at the apartment. So let's sort of talk about the footage. Let me get, let me, before I get comments, let me say this after you've just watched this footage. I'm not an expert at this. The point of these videos is to take you along my journey as I grow and get better. And you should see that progression over time. Hopefully I'll be honest. I struggled coloring that footage. Um, basically, I think the issue that I'm running into most is that I keep making the mistake of equating it too much like shooting raw photos, even though I know it's different, just I, I need to like get that out of my brain because what I keep doing is shooting and being like, okay, well, this is close enough, I could fix it in post, which is the way I approach photos normally. It's like, I could fix everything, who cares? I can't do that with the videos. We're not shooting raw video, we're shooting C-Log video, 8-bit C-Log video. There's only so much I can do with it and I am running into issues there. So listen, this is something, this is why I'm doing these videos. This is what I'm forced myself to do it. The only way to get better at it is to continue to do this. And I think we're getting close. So basically what I wanted to do though, this is what I do want to show you. And like I said at the top of this video, it's combining what I've learned so far into one place. I find that when you Google how to edit C-Log stuff, all you get are all these fucking videos that are just like trying to get you guys to buy packages and it's just like, oh my God, I can't, I can't with it. So let me walk through the steps of how I got to the footage that you saw, just so you know what to do. And then hopefully, maybe I'll do another video on how to actually color correct all this. I'll walk you through little baby steps of what I did. Obviously it's still a little bit of a struggle for me, but as I get better, I want to, have you guys along my journey. So, all right, so basically what you want to do is download the LUT package from Canon. So you go on the website, you go to what are they, support, drivers, go to the cameras, find your camera. We are shooting with the Canon R5, of course. In the software section on that page, uh, you're gonna find something that says Canon lookup table. Just download the newest one. Um, and then when you open it up, this is where it gets confusing. This is actually where I made some of my initial mistakes uh, when I first started recording with it, was that I wasn't sure what to do. Because if you look right here, there's already, there's two folders, 1D LUT and 3D LUT. When you go to the 3D LUT, there's all these different things, 17 grit and 65 grit and like, oh God, it makes it so, so confusing of what to do. And like, again, like this is something that like, I just couldn't find it properly anywhere else. So this is what I see here for you. Anyway. Uh, go to 65 lot, go to full range, and then what you're doing is you want to match up what we shot to what we want again. So we shot uh, a 709 Canon log, and we want that to go 
uh, log ones, and we want that to go to uh, 709, because that's where we're editing. So you see there's scanning C log two, C log three, and C log. So you want to take this one. So now how do we get that into Premiere? So this is what you want to do. This is only, the steps are similar for other systems, just because this is what I do. Um, Premiere on PC, this is what I'm gonna show you how to do. So in another file, Explorer, you're gonna to go to your local disk. There's a lot of steps here, so pay attention. You're gonna to go to users. You're gonna go into your user. You're gonna go into app data. You want, see how it's sort of like, it's not fully there. You just wanna make sure you're viewing everything. Um, hidden items, if you don't see it, just click hidden items if you see it there. Um, app data, roaming, uh, Adobe. And then you're gonna to go to common. And then you're gonna to go to LUTs. And then you see input and technical, go into technical. And you want to drag that file into this folder. Uh, so then what happens is when we go back into Premiere, when you have that uh, folder in Premiere, when you go to your um, color tab here, it says input LUT, that LUT will now appear in that list. And that's what you want. So basically uh, I pulled this scene here just cause honestly it's gonna be an easy one to show you guys what I did. So this is the scene that I shot. Uh, this is all LUT, there's nothing else here. So the first step you wanna do is actually put that LUT on there and that's going to bring it close to where you can start manipulating and, and color correcting. So go to your input lot. We are going to go to uh, BT709 to BT709. Um, click that. And okay, we're already like getting there. It made a significant difference just by putting that initial lot on there. It looks much, much, much better. So listen, here's where I can walk you through some of the steps that I did. Again, like I said, this isn't the, don't look at me to teach you how to exactly color correct everything perfectly because I'm still learning, but these are the steps that you are going to take, beginning steps to get you close. So, I mean, just basically what I do is I look at the image and I look at all of our, our, our scopes and everything here. So I could have an eyeball this looks good and technically does this look good. So first thing I always wanna do is add contrast because it's a very flat image. Let's go to 30 and see how we feel. And you'll see the waveform's changing. Perfect, okay. So already, I mean, this looks pretty good. Um, the things that you wanna check are skin tone and white balance. So it would be easier if I had had uh, like a middle gray card with me in this scene. I mean, eyeballing it, it looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do is um, first just I mean, the white balance looks great. I'm honestly not gonna worry about that super right now. I'm just gonna check our skins. So I'm going to go to 200%. I'm going to find a spot on the forehead here. She's gonna kill me for having me zoom in so close. Um, under effects controls, you have opacity and have this little pen tool. I'm just going to draw around her forehead. And what that's gonna do is on the scopes, it's going to take out everything else and leave just those skin tones. So you see this line here, um, and you basically want to, this line to be right on that line. And you know what? It kind of looks 100%, so I'm not gonna change anything. I'm gonna go back to the opacity thing on the effects controls and just clear to get rid of that thing. Go back to fit so I can see the whole scene. So now that we know that the, the color white balance is right, let's just fix other things. So uh, I'm looking here. I mean, this was shot pretty well, actually. Uh, we're, the only highlights that are blown out are right to the left of upper left of the head. You can see it on the on the waveform there. And like, that's fine. We're not gonna recover that anyway. It's all in the background. It's the sky. Not concerned about that. Uh, blacks are pretty much where you want them to be. There's really not a lot to do here. Um, I mean, look at, I mean, basically what you could do too is just like bring up shadows a little bit and bring them down a little bit. So yeah, maybe bring down shadows a little bit. I'm gonna bring up saturation. What I found is depending on where it is exporting to, I've had a lot of issues, not so much, I'm 106. We are technically past, um, in, this, in this circle here, these lines, the inner sort of like, how many dots is that? One, two, one, two, three, hexagon shape is showing you your saturation color save where the brightness is spreading out this way. You want those things to just hit the, that hexagon and you know you're 
perfect saturation. I'm a little past it. One, you're seeing where it goes past it though. It's this bright, bright, bright yellow, really saturated yellow behind her anyway. It's not really her skin so much. So eyeball it a little bit, but use that to help you stay safe. Okay, so what I wanna show you guys now is a scene where uh, we actually have to co color correct it. Uh, we picked a scene that actually looked too good. So uh, I put the scene out here. It already has a lot on it. It already has a lot of adjustments to it. The only thing left to do is actually fix the white balance. So what we're gonna do is actually do the same thing that we did before. So I'm going to zoom in to where it's white, which is in the sign. All right, and we're gonna go to our effects controls, opacity. We're gonna make a little box where it should be all white. Um, so see this box here? Basically what you want is pure white is going to have the red, green, and blue levels all together. So we want to make them all together. As you see here, the greens, they're totally off. The, the red is around, what, 81, green 83, blue 87. Picking those numbers out of thin air, basically. So uh, the easiest way I have found to do this is to go to your RGB curves, and there you go. We have red, green, blue. And we want to adjust these to make them all even. So we're gonna start with the blue because that's the farthest one out. You grab the top right corner and we want to bring it down. So we pull it down. And you're gonna try and line it up with where the green is. Sometimes it's a little hard, but uh, right about there, okay. And now I'm looking at it and the red is still a little low. So we're going to pull the red left, keeping it up the whole time, just until it's even. Right over there. Okay. So now we're gonna go back to effects control, clear that out, and go back to fit. And great, there you go. Uh, should be perfectly white balanced. And then we're gonna deal with skin again. You're gonna look at that skin tone line, but in this shot, we don't have to worry about that. And that's it. This is, like I said, this is a journey we're going on together. Uh, I'll be honest, the, again, like this was a struggle for me to get this right. Um, but hopefully this helps you sort of mitigate the mistakes that you're going to make because I continue to make mistakes. It's confusing. Um, yeah, but you know, let me know, uh, comments below what you guys think, like what questions you may have, what tips you guys have for me. I love when you guys give me tips. Cause again, like I can only say this so many times, like we're all on this journey together. And, um, I think like this is the fun part is like having that back and forth or whatever. And I think I definitely need to improve. And the, the next video I'm gonna do should be a little better, next video a little better, next video a little better. And yeah, and hopefully one day I could do a, a video that's like, hey, here's a color crack perfectly. I think that's really my next goal. I mean, some places to look out, just that I've been looking at. I mean, Jared Dunn has done uh, amazing videos about this kind of stuff. Um, he's been really, really helpful just going through all his videos. So I'm gonna try and get better and you guys can come along journey with me. So yeah, um, I guess if you made it this far, maybe like the video, that'd be cool. Um, subscribe, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye.